Hey YouTube, it's Alexa Giovanni. Gyro, do you take the intro? I take it you've been busy for the past one to two days with the release, which may have been early for many of you who caught wind of it. I've been busy as well as you can see, and this video is sifting through speculation, expectation and thoughts of the big Animal Crossing New Horizons and what it might hold of us, and confirming or busting theories. Before we start though, I know this isn't a complete list, but I thought I'd introduce you to some of the gyroids that you can look forward to. Later on in the video, you'll learn more about them and how to find them. Are they cute or are they cute? Let me know in the comments which one's your favourite so far. Thanks gyroids, I'll take it over from here. This you should already know, but in case you don't, to make the gyroids that you saw in the intro, you need to bury a gyroid fragment and water it. It doesn't grow straight away, but unlike the cliché, it will grow overnight. You know you've done it right when you can see steam toots come out of the crack. Yeah, I know that doesn't sound great, but how else can I explain it? You have a go of it in the comments as well. Here in front of me is one I've been brewing overnight, and I'll plant one right next to it to see what happens now that it's raining on my island. Sure enough, just like watering with a can, you can see that the steam is coming out of it again. Guess that saves you a little bit of effort? I'd claimed in a previous video that it would cost a pretty penny for the upgrades to 3.2, 4 and 5k storage. In truth, I expected these to be more than this, but in case you're wondering, it costs 700k, 900k and 1.2 mil for these upgrades respectively. I, like many of us, were hugely excited to see the ability to stash multiple things into the storage shed. But I'd asked the question in a prior video whether we'd be getting this behaviour in the houses. I guess this one's busted. Now, if you're watching this video carefully, you would have seen that I'd put a DIY into my storage just a moment ago. If you missed it, here it is again into my storage shed. This is a godsend. No more littered beaches, footpaths and islands in general. I wasn't 100% sure on whether the storage sheds could be bought or made. The answer is now known. You get both. A fancy looking storage shed and a wooden one. Plus a donations box, which is interesting in itself. It's like a portable Lloyd for things other than constructibles. After building the original wooden shed, I discovered the Bible one, which got me an upgrade. I'd already predetermined the right place for it at the airport for quick drops and grabs. Where have you placed yours? Let me know in the comments. The other question I had was whether or not you could have multiple storage sheds on the one island. And the answer is you can. Just like the airport, I've placed one right by the pier as I hoard all of what I can find with Cap'n's tours. So I guess that one confirms that thought. If you're curious like me, did you wonder with all these potential merchants how you'd go shopping? This wasn't in the direct event, so I'm not 100% sure when this ABD suddenly appears. Talking about ABD, I asked myself that same question on whether you could have more than one ABD outdoors, so I put that theory to the test. I often reimburse my waterers for my flowers, 
So now I don't have to run away from my help if and when I run low on funds. In the 24 hour lead up to the update, I'd put out a video of what you should do in preparation for the update. I'd made a prediction of 100k per site. So check that video, which I'd leave in the description as well if you want to see it later. I'd also suspected that just like Lloyd's for ramps and inclines, you'd have to wait until the next day for them to be available and only can do one at a time. Unfortunately, we do have to pace ourselves with these stalls. It'll take you about a week. And this does confirm that you can only have one stall being built at one time. After the preparation video, I did another video which explains what to do in your first 24 hours, which I've left in the top right and the description below. In that video, I'd recommended to get Leaf unlocked first in the hope that he'd be selling veggies, and sure enough, he was. In that same preparations video, I'd said that you'd be the one having to pay for the Lloyds for the stalls, because the villagers sure wouldn't be paying for it. But it does look like the villagers are contributing to it, which is way more than I thought they'd give. There's no other human villagers on my island, so it must be them. A couple other Animal Crossing YouTubers had predicted that there'd be eight stalls based on orientation and guesstimation as to where these Lloyds were placed in the direct video. But I can confirm that there are seven co-ops here and here are they all so that you can see them. So I guess this one is busted. A couple of the big YouTubers on Animal Crossing have toyed with the idea that with the introduction of Harv's Plaza that we'd stop getting the NPCs visiting on our own island. But so far I've seen Red, Leaf, Kix make appearances on our island as normal. And even Isabel now introduces them in the morning announcement. Honestly, how excited were you at the first sight of Capen? I was excited, but there was something that I really appreciated in New Leaf, so I was really wondering whether that had carried through to this version of the game. Firstly, in New Horizons, you can use the X, Y, A and B buttons to do reactions on the boat. The sea shanties are fun for the first few times, but can get a little long-winded. Did you know you could mash the right directional button on the left Joy-Con and the B button at the same time to force him to stop and finish his shanty early? You're welcome! Now on to villager hunting. I was fortunate enough to already have an open plot on the release day, so this was my number one on my list of things to debunk or not. So I visited my very first Cap'n tour, hoping to find a villager, but I can confirm that this is busted. You can't find like you can with Dodo Airlines when you have a plot open. Whilst watching the direct event, they'd left a vine on the cliff, so I always wondered whether or not it was stuck there or something, and the others were removable, but I can confirm that they all can be removed from these islands. One consistent thing about these islands is you're guaranteed to find a gyroid fragment. We wondered whether we would find new DIY recipes and old ones on our tours. And sure enough, not only do you get DIYs, but you also get cooking DIY as well. It's worth noting though that you don't always get new ones. You can get old existing ones depending on what season that you land in. But I'm kind of excited that I've got some of these new cooking ones. Like this pull apart bread. I'm sure many of us were also very excited about this prospect of having these cool looking Zelda like ruins and whether you could craft them or not. Well, it looks like you can. And I can confirm you certainly can. I found two of them so far, plus the glowing pond, which you might recognize from the intro in this very video. In 
If you haven't already realized the hard way, Kappen does only offer one tour a day, so make sure that they count and make sure that you make the most of it. We thought we could farm as many of these goodies as possible, but unfortunately this one is busted. Admittedly, whilst not every island is extremely exciting, there was one that I'll call Money Tree Island, much like the Money Rock Island that we've grown used to with Dodo Airlines. So keep a watch out for that one. That does give you 1,000 bells for each bag that falls off the tree from what I've seen. Some of them might be more. I won't even begin to try and catalogue the types of islands that we land on, but I finally landed on this one, which was daytime on my island, in the regular island, but landed at nighttime, much like the direct event. First was the fact that there were star fragments on the ground, so I thought I'd make a few wishes whilst I was there. Then, like the wishes I'd just made, I found that there was a star rock which had more than one star sign, which was downright weird. That's such a foreign concept, given that we only ever get the one star sign when we do get stars on our beach. Guess what happens if I bust this rock? A stone. Do you remember in a previous video that we'd uncovered the palm trees were weirdly growing straight out of the grass on that island that had the square pattern grass? Well. I wanted to know whether or not you could transplant this tree onto my own home soil to see what happens. Sadly, it didn't plant. So I thought, let's try that in reverse. What if I take a regular palm tree and try to plant it on the special island? I kept trying till I came across one to try this little experiment. And sure enough, I couldn't plant one. So then, just to be sure, I thought I'd transplant one from THE island that I was on, and even that didn't work. So that was weird. Safe to say, I visited my fair of share of islands, and I'm still yet to find more fruit that I was hoping for. Let me know in the comments whether you found any fruits. This just left me take the frustrations out on these trees. I needed the wood anyway. Some would say a tomato is a fruit anyway, given it's got seeds. With all that said, here's a list of things that you should With all that said, here's a list of things that you should do on every Cap'n Island tour. Always scan the beach for a recipe. There's been one on every single island that I've been on, and to match there's always been a fragment. Be sure to grab as many of the vines as possible as well as the weirds. Well, the weird weeds, which I now know Nintendo calls them glowing moss, but I still call them weirds. Anyway, go figure. Oh, and make sure that you grab the bushes which normally aren't seen on dodo flights. Speaking of which, I thought that these flowers were fragipanies or something like that, but it turns out that these do have names. White plumeria bush and the pink equivalent. I did find out though on my island that these weren't in season, so I do wonder what time of the year that they are in bloom. I've also tested it on both northern and southern islands, so it's probably some period in between. Here's a look at all the 11 new reactions that we get. Watch Isabel's reaction as well as my own.
If you're like me, you would have raced to the museum to see Brewster. Unfortunately, despite me having donated 60 catchable things and invited Red and start collecting my art, I still wasn't seeing him. Hopefully you haven't restarted your island because of this. Whilst my Critopedia is complete except for that one darn sea pig, I realised that I hadn't donated a single sea creature to the museum. This is because I've moved my character from my old island to the new OLED switch. To remedy this, all you need to do is find the sea creature and donate it to Blathers to start your sea creatures collection. Then the good old leave the museum and come back in again and then you get Blathers thinking to get you onto a mini quest. As previously mentioned in another video, Brewster loves joyroids, so like him you have to find him on a cap and ride, then the rest is pretty straightforward. I wanted to test out the non-working amiibos prior to 2.0 in the roost trick, and sure enough, DJ KK could be summoned. I also tested it with Lottie as well, who dragged along her Happy Home Paradise posse. I also loved the fact that the Able Sisters stayed in character, in particular Sable's very cold conversational manner. In New Leaf, after you were consistent with your buying of coffee every day for seven days, you'd be offered to work at the cafe. You'd have a try to work out and figure out what each villager's likes were in coffee, but up to 13 or so days, I still haven't been offered a job behind the counter, so that's busted so far. However, after about a week worth of coffee, you do get the takeaway coffee, which might have been earlier because I'd lost track of days, and he also offers you pigeon milk at one stage. Later on, I did stop in my tracks when he did call me back in and I thought, this is it, he's going to ask me for a job. But he just gave me a recipe, it looks like. So that's another one that's been confirmed. Again, Brewster stopped me in my tracks and burst my bubble once again by pulling me back and giving me some beans. Beans you used to get from New Leaf as a reward for doing a good job when it came to serving customers for coffee, but I thought I'd try to see what would happen if I planted the beans. I thought maybe this would work. So I put them in the ground, gave them a bit of a water, nothing happened. In the end, it's just something that you put there as a novelty, I guess. In my predictions video, I had predicted that we could get up to the third level of terraforming and with the introduction of ladders and vines, I thought that this was on the money, but sadly this one's busted. Maybe this has come down to being just me, so let me know in the comments as well whether this is something that you wanted, but I was really hopeful that we could get diagonal ramps when it came to infrastructure. So I thought I'd give it a bit of a go no matter how hard I tried, still no luck. Unfortunately, busted. I'm absolutely positive that this one is a big wish list item for many players, and that's the ability to lay rugs or carpets outside to make outside rooms and things like that. Sad to say, this one is not in the version of the game. Soz. If you're a collector of Amiibos, you might have realised that some of the Series 1-4 to special cards wouldn't scan for Harv's Island prior to 2.0. Since the update though, many of the special NPCs like Brewster, Lottie and Katrina, I can now confirm do work, so never fear if you are thinking that your Series 1-4 to cards were useless. Man, that was a lot to get through, so no wonder my wife believes that she's lost me to the game. I really have been busy since this release. Coffee has helped somewhat. Give this video a like if you have enjoyed it and hope you consider subscribing to give me some more motivation to make more videos. Check out my Amiibo giveaway which now includes Sid and Marlo on top of Sherb as prizes which I got two new packs that I opened up and it's now open to under 18s with parents permission to enter. So this is Alexi Giovanni signing off and until next time, see ya!